Anyone have Deuteronomy chapter 5? Yes. Alright. Excuse me for the ladies of the hour. Uh, yes. Let us pray again. Eternal Father, my God, we want to thank you for this blessed privilege of being invited to your course of praise and thanksgiving. Now we ask and invite your spirit again to take over our lives be your teaching. We pray in Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to go over Deuteronomy a little bit, but I just wanted to show you in um, Deuteronomy chapter 5. He's reading Deuteronomy chapter, I mean, he Exodus chapter 20. And Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 5 is um, it's just a repeat, a reiteration of the Ten Commandments. However, there's a difference, much difference. Um, one, if you notice, Exodus points us to the Creator. But in Deuteronomy 5, it points us to the Redeemer. Say that again. <laughs> Exodus 20 mm -hmm. points us to the Creator. Right. It takes us to the Creator. But in Deuteronomy, it takes us to the Redeemer. Same commandments. If you ever paid attention to that passage, you'll see that um you see the Sabbath is a little bit changed inside that passage, Deuteronomy chapter five, etc. Et and um there's a reason for that. God does not do anything by accident. Sure. And remember, God written it in stone, right? Mm -hmm. In letters of fire. In letters of fire. But do you remember that he wrote it on the front side and the back side? Yep. <laughs> he wrote the commandments on the front side and the back side. So is it possible that God written one side the creation and the other side the redeemer? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the number two in scripture is the number for witness. So when God writes something twice, it's a witness. With two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst. And so when you look at when God wrote again the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy chapter 5, He wrote it looking back to the Redeemer. In fact, when you look at the first five books of the Bible, you know, the, you know they call it the Law of Moses. So you got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right? Mm -hmm. Amazingly, Genesis and Exodus look forward to the book of Leviticus because Leviticus reveals the most about Christ as our great high priest. Mm -hmm. And the book of Numbers and Deuteronomy look back towards Leviticus. Why? Because it's about Christ. He's creator and redeemer. Amen. And so God never does anything by accident. So if he written something twice, he's pointing to two aspects of two or two goals of Christ. Um, you have to forgive me for the latest of the hour. Anytime I touch upon the law of God, this subject, something happens. Hmm. As, as you see, I'm here alone. My wife and my son, we were all happy to want to come up here. The next thing you know, my son got really fussy last night. He kept my wife extremely up, kept her up all night long and things like that, and she's like, she's like, I'm tired, I'm burned out, I can't make it. And then, I'm like, okay, no problem. You know, we said our prayers, had our devotion. I said, I'll see you in a little bit. Get on the road, don't have my wallet. Don't have my wallet. Next thing you know, I, I, I'm stopped by police. Oh, wow. But thank you, Lord, he just redirected me, you know, to go a different way than where I was supposed to go. And so that's why I wound up being 20 minutes late. But this topic is one that's dear to my heart when it talks about the law of God. So we're going to spend a little bit here. And I, 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 approach this, I approach this from a different angle. I prayed about it, researched it, I approached it from a different angle. And so please bear with me. Let us read together here. It says, Everyone is accountable to God according to the ability and talent which he has received. Those who are on pro probation to see whether or not they are to be subjects of the kingdom of God must be what? Yeah. And True. with. No. No. Now, let's repeat. Those who are on probation to see whether or not they are to be subjects of the kingdom of God must be tried and proved now. Those who love God in spirit and in truth 
will be pronounced subjects of the heavenly kingdom. And this is the statement. The law of God, which is perfect, what? Holiness. Is the only truth, what? Standard, Standard of character. character. Love is expressed in what? Obedience. Obedience. And perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. Amen. Love is expressed in what? Obedience. Obedience, Obedience wow. is the highest form of worship. Amen. Go on. Those who love God have the what? Seal. Seal of God in their foreheads and work the works of God. Isn't that amazing? I want us to look at that last statement. Those who love God have the what? Seal. seal. Not everybody has the seal. Oh, I'm going to give you another statement later, but continuing on. This it is. Would that all who profess Christianity knew what it means to love God practically. Hmm. Not everybody loves God. At least not practically. <laughs> then they would ever bear with them a sense of the sacredness of the name and character of Jesus Christ and would be one with Christ as he is one with the Father. They would then better appreciate their responsibilities and would adorn the doctrine of Christ our Savior. They would have some realization, realization of the infinite holiness of God, knowing that He is high and lifted up, and the train of His glory fills the temple. They would have a powerful influence upon the life and character of those around them. See that? When you love God, you have what? A powerful influence upon the life and character of those around them, which would work as leaven amid the mass of humanity, transforming others through the power of Jesus Christ. Connected with the source of power, they would never lose their vital influence, but would ever increase in efficiency, always abounding in the work of the Savior. Genesis 1 1. I hope we did our little studies this morning. That said, this uh, passage is taken from Youth Instructor, by the way. The book Youth Instructor, one of my favorite books. Remember what? In the beginning, God. Now, we're not going to go over Genesis chapter 1. I'm just going to point some things out to your, your enlightenment. Let me ask you this question. When you went over Genesis chapter 1, right, what came to your mind? I know that obviously that came to your mind is, and God said. Right? And it was, and then he said it was, we all know that part, right? But I want you to think. Think with me, because I'm a thinking individual. At least I try. When you was reading over Genesis chapter 1 into chapter 2, right, what else came to your mind? Like, what was your thought? Other than what you saw there, because many people, let me tell you something about us as a people. We study Genesis chapter 1 as the creation account. I'm here to tell you, and I apologize in advance. You're wrong. Genesis 1 is not about creation. I repeat. Genesis 1 is not about creation. It reveals creation in it. But Genesis 1 is about whom? He's the subject of creation because he's the creator. Even theologians today got it wrong because they're looking at creation and they miss. God. Inside Genesis 1 1 all the way to Genesis 2 verse 3, the name God is written, and I read it in Hebrew as well, Elohim, which means the covenant maker. That's the name Elohim, the covenant makers. Keep that in your head because that's important. 35 times. I repeat, from Genesis 1 1 to Genesis 2 3, the name God is mentioned 35 times. The words heaven and earth inside Genesis 1, 1 all the way to Genesis 2, 3 is mentioned 21 times each. But who's the subject of creation? Is it God or is it heaven and earth? It's God. And the, 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 these, these come by accident. Like I said, I studied in the Hebrew. 35 times. Hmm, wow. What does that mean? That means... Seven, which is the number of perfection, multiply five, which is the number of power, 
Did you follow me? Yes, yes. <laughs> you have your hand, your sister? No. <laughs> Seven, perfect, and five, power. What's your question? I want you to repeat this one. Oh, I got you. Do it for dummies? <laughs> Genesis chapter 1. Remember I said, this is, this is important. The subject of Genesis one, 1 is what? Even theologians say it's the subject of Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is the subject of Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is the subject of Genesis 1. Even theologians, even seven day Adventists, which is the best theologians in the world ever, they get it wrong. The chapter is not about creation. And you see heaven and earth, heaven, you see that going back and forth inside the earth. But it's mentioned 21 times each. You can do this study on your own. Uh -huh. But this is important. This is vitally important. But the name God, Elohim, E, capital E, L, O, H, I, M, means the covenant makers. So if I'm the covenant maker, everything that I make, I make a covenant with. And the name Elohim is mentioned 35 times from Genesis 1, 1 to Genesis 2, 3. So the number 35, when you break it down, is 7 times 5. 7 is the number of perfection. Exactly. And the number 5 is the number of power. You can also say the number of grace, as well as truth and mercy. And it's interesting that those words I just mentioned all have five letters each. God does not do anything by accident. So the subject of creation is not creation itself, but God himself as the covenant maker. Let's look at something else about Genesis chapter 1, shall we? This is all the studies you'll find in Genesis chapter 1. See, I love to celebrate when I do my studies. When you look at it, these are all sciences. They have their beginning with God. Here, you got theology. We all know theology, right? That's the what? Study of God, right? We have physics. We all know physics. We got what? Cosmology. We got chronology. We got geography. We got botany. We got astronomy. Zoology. Oh, yeah, I love zoology. Who loves to go to the oh, zoo? Yes. <laughs> I love animals. I got a bunch of animals in my house. I got, we got anthropology, the study of man. We got sociology right there. We got psychology. We got philosophy. Do you see that? Do you see this? See, that's why I ask. When we study Genesis 1, do we see these things inside there? I asked God, and I wanted to know, what is it that I'm looking at? I'm looking at everything begins with the wisdom of God. Every science, even scientists can't figure it out. Even science can't figure it out. Uh, I, I put here Genesis chapter 1, verse, uh, one, chapter 1 to 3, because it provides a clear answer to the basic questions of what? Where do we come from? Where are we? Why are we here? And where are we going? Don't every one of us have those questions? Yes. yes. It begins with God. Look at psychology. Right there. Uh, I put Genesis 3, 7 to, uh, to 13. I wanted to, to go over that, but we don't have that kind of time. But you see, that's the reason why I'm late. Because you see, yeah. but you see there, the, psycholo the psychological phenomenon of guilt, shame, fear, and low self-image. Self All that comes from what? From not knowing where we come from or where we're going or who we are. So you see, everything begins with God. Scientists can't figure it out. Hmm. Theologians can't figure it out. I don't have neither degree, but I can understand this. Amen. Hallelujah. You see what God can do for you when He's leading you, when you yes. allow Him to lead? Yes, 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 yes. He can take a sixth grade dropout and teach scientists science. Hmm. 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 This is beautiful stuff. That's why I said we want to celebrate. Praise the Lord. Everything in creation was created by the Word of God and is established by the law of God. There's law of physics. There's the law for animals. Do you realize you don't see no animals raping people? No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. True. No gay animals. <laughs> you see how far we've gone? Mm -hmm. There's a study right now at Yale University stating that we should be sensitive to people's sexual orientations, including bestiality. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, pedophilia. This is a study <laughs> at Yale University. Yep. 
They're going against law. They're going against natural law. Then we have Genesis chapter 2 here. And Genesis chapter 2, when you read it, you'll see that there's three covenants, not two. We've been preaching two for so long. You know, the Sabbath and marriage and family. It's three covenants. There's three covenants inside there. Three things came out of the Garden of Eden when man fell. You know what came out of the Garden of Eden? Grace and faith. Amen. 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 That's a covenant. God gave us what? Power. Remember I said that? But yeah. He, yeah. he gave us perfection and he gave us power. See, we talk about holiness here. He gave us the Sabbath covenant. He gave us the covenant of grace and faith and the covenant of the marriage and family covenant. Let's explore this a little bit. This is, the, this is one of my favorite definitions from one of my teachers. He says, love is the unchanging principle that creates ideal relationships and law defines and maintains ideal relationships. That's important. The only way to define a relationship is by law. When God created man, right, that was a law. You know what kind of law that God put inside man? The law of work. The law of faith. His moral law. And then God gave him another law. His wife. Do you realize that's a law? One man. One woman. But now today, we're saying one man, many women. Or one woman, many men. They're going against law. Oh yeah, one, one man, man, one man. Many men. Many men. Or children. <laughs> God forbid. But they're going against law. Law, love creates the relationship. Law sustains the relationship. That's the only way people survive in marriages. Mm -hmm. Going for it. Going for it. Covenant, the covenant created his creation. All laws, especially the Ten Commandments, express the mind and heart of the covenant creator and is binding upon all living intelligent creatures. The moral law of Ten Commandments is the only law that is unchanging and specifically designed to regulate the conduct or behavior of all men and women. I repeat that last statement because I probably went over your head on that one. No, no. The moral law of Ten Commandments is the only law that is unchanging. Hmm. God can change the other laws. Amen. But he just he chose not to. This is the highest law, the Ten Commandments, the moral law. That's the highest. He cannot change that. You know why? That would mean he would have to go over your will. Hmm. You'll have to cross your hmm. will. God does not do that. It's the only law that is unchanging. It's specifically designed to regulate the conduct or behavior of all men and women. See, look at this. The Sabbath covenant, the majestic, is, it has four passages here throughout Scripture. Believe me, I do intense study. I see. All right? And these are the four reasons why we should keep Sabbath. One, because it's the majestic memorial of creation, mm -hmm. Genesis 2, verse 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. It's a divine command, Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. We recite that for affirmation and faith almost every Sabbath for every church I go to. It's a perpetual covenant, which means it's ongoing from generation to generation to generation, even after the millennium. Yes. It's a perpetual covenant. Hmm. Exodus 31, verses 13 and 17. The universal and eternal blessing of rest and salvation. Hebrews 4, 4. Why did I put that there? I'll tell you why. Because it's God who seek and rest. Hmm. 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 He cannot rest hmm. until we rest with Him and yeah, in Him. Amen. 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 Hmm. If you notice... Um, Boy, should I share? Yes, I have to share this. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2. Verse 2 and 3. And let us celebrate the Lord here. This is amazing. Like I said, God does not do anything by accident. I don't know how I came across this, but this is such a wonderful blessing. Let us read Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he 
had rested from all his work which God created and made. Hmm. Y'all read that, right? I didn't make that up. Y'all read that yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me ask you this question. <coughs> How many times do you find the name God mentioned in those two verses? <laughs> and this is just the seventh day. How many times do you find the word God mentioned in that verse? Three. Three times. And remember, God is what? Elohim. He's what? Covenant makers or covenant creators, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The name God is mentioned three times. Now, what about the personal pronoun he or his? How many times that's mentioned? And just let me tell you. Three, two, three. Go ahead. Three, In four. Two verses. Four. And those two verses, how many times? Four, I think. Oh, and his? He and his, you want? Yes, he and his. Oh, one, two, seven. Seven. Hold on. Let us celebrate. Let us rejoice. Because seven. God is doing something new in our minds. Seven. His name is mentioned how many times? Three. That's the number of divinity. Mm. The personal pronoun of he and his is mentioned how many times? Seven. 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 That's the number of perfection. And this is all on the what? Sabbath day. Mm. Three plus seven is what? How do you say the Ten Commandments didn't exist before? Wow. This is in the Hebrew. <laughs> the universal eternal blessing and rest of salvation. How did the theologians miss this? How did we miss this? I, I remember telling you and sharing with you before, maybe the last time, God ends his work before he begins the work. This is, a, this is a God who we serve. Amen. He ends his work before he begins his work. That's why the Sabbath doesn't have an evening in the morning. Amen. Yes, my sister. Yes. I'm say I have a question. Yes. I just saw in the Bible, God mm -hmm. bless the seventh day. Uh-huh. But what about the other days? The he did do it. Okay. Now we have... We have to be careful because God bless one day. Yes. He, all the others were made in perfection. Yes. But they say, blessed Sunday, bless, bless this, bless that. We have to be careful. Of course. Because people using that now, because on a prayer line, I have a sister every time she said, happy, happy, um, blessed Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and blessed all the Monday. others. Mm -hmm. the, it's not supposed to. Ah. It's not supposed to be that way. God. I tell you but this. When you, when you tell them, they're trying to show you that you you go into far away things. Mm -hmm. We have to be observant and not to give the enemy praise. Yes, that's true. The thing okay. is, is that God blessed one day. Mm. He sanctified that day. He rested that day. And he ended creation on that day. Amen. All right? Now, if we look at the words inside Genesis 2, verse 2 and 3, right? It says, he ended, rested, blessed it, and sanctified. Those are end experiences. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. That means he was, what? Working at the end before the beginning. Every minute he was in the Sabbath. He was making it holy before it was holy. Every day, every minute that he was on the Sabbath, he was making it holy before it was holy. He ended the work before he began the work. This is a, this is a creator who made a covenant with heaven and earth. The story of the Sabbath is to show his intelligent agencies up in the heavens above as well as he below is that he's going to what? end the controversy and it's going to take place on the Sabbath. Mm. It has a lot to do with the Sabbath too. It has a lot to do with Sabbath. That's the reason why it has no evening and morning. God it will God will eventually find rest. Hallelujah. Amen. Rest from what, Rob? Rest from sin. And it's baleful result. Do you realize the thousand year millennium is a, a thousand year Sabbath? Of course. Mm. That's what the Sabbath was supposed to be, an eternal, universal blessing. That's what God is waiting for. 
But he's waiting for us. Let's so, 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 so when it comes to the pillar of the faith, um, the Sabbath is important. Right, right. Because you know, where is it? The law of God. Right. Okay, okay. So, 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 so the Sabbath is a much. I'm saying it's much broader, much broader, deeper, deeper than we than we than we talk about. The all we all we like to talk about. Oh yeah, God made it with His finger. And it's the commandment. So we keep pointing people's commandment. We don't know these things. Yeah, and and I'll let you, that is why sometimes I even tell us in the Adventists when we preach about Sabbath. I think I mentioned that here. Mm -hmm. We always talk about and and we emphasize like um, do work on the Sabbath and do yeah, Sabbath. exactly, yeah. But there are many people who do work. Mm -hmm. on Saturday but who never kept a Sabbath yeah. mm -hmm. because Sabbath is not about do not work exactly Sabbath basically is about relationship mm -hmm. amen and 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 many times in our crusade we preach <coughs> about Sabbath and we emphasize in do work do work on the Sabbath let her, let her. but but we don't we don't magnify and highlight the relationship of the mm -hmm. creature with the creator. I'm going to take it further with you. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath command says you must work six days. Taking a day off is breaking the Sabbath. You see how point that is? Mm -hmm. Many people will keep Saturday and say they keep the Sabbath. Yeah. But so take Sunday off and rest and watch football. <laughs> Or hang out at the shopping malls. The Sabbath commandment also includes working six days for the salvation of souls. Yeah. Hmm. Is that not what Jesus did? Yeah, yes, yeah. That's the only work you can do, really. It's bless and sanctify, heal. You understand? You can't take a day off. If you're a Christian, you're not supposed to. Because it's an act of service. As, as, as Your as service, as far as that, saving souls, saving souls, saving souls, is an act of service as if you're saving angels. Angels need to see that you're interested in their salvation. Bible Commentary, Volume Six, Page 13, well, 11, 13. Ellen White writes. She says, "Those who overcome the enemy of God and man will occupy positions in the heavenly courts." even above holy angels. Angels above need to trust you. Angels above need to see that you, you exercise disinterested benevolence on their behalf. They're looking for you to rule them and to lead them into worship. But how are we going to see that if we become the church on Sabbath but we rest on Sunday like the world? We don't show our interest in evangelism. How do they see that? Angels have questions. And, and, and as you touch that, as you touch that, I think this week I was mentioning that. Even here, no, yes, evangelism is nice, but. Come on, brother. <laughs> Sometimes we crowd evangelism on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Which can make, which makes it a burden. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and people take offense if you don't go out on Sabbath mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to share a book or to do this. And now the rest is broken. Mm -hmm. But but evangelism is not basically for Sabbath. Sabbath is for Relationship with, with the Creator, exactly. meeting with exactly. the Creator. Yeah. Oh, There's Lord. nothing wrong with doing Amen. it, but right. right. you shouldn't right. make it a burden on to His understand. day. And people, brethren, brethren, listen, listen, listen. Mm -hmm. oh. it, <laughs> we, we, we know what went on among us because of the same thing. Some people don't want to go out and Sabbath, this and that and mm -hmm. that and all that. But we fail to realize that the, 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 the evangelism work is not on Sabbath. You don't have to do it on Sabbath. It's not on Sabbath. You should, if you do decide to do it, you should do very little. Yes. But you should be in, your, in, in God's presence being refreshed 
for the week to come. If you're doing too much burdens on the Sabbath, guess what? The enemy has an advantage over you for the week that follows. That's why Adam's first day was what? The Sabbath. The Sabbath. Yeah. He had to be refreshed for the next week. Right. He had to, He needed the presence of God. He needed all the blessings he could have, that was afforded. Yeah. So God could say, listen, I'm going to step back and I'm going to watch you work six days. Mm -hmm. And every day you work, it must be good as my work is good. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me, but I'm going to ask you a question. But I, I think, at, um, I, go ahead, I don't check, check At the end of your you. day, are you certain that your work has been good? Don't answer me out loud. Just mm -hmm. answer in your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. If not, you cannot, and it's not possible, to intelligently keep this out. Right. God set the example for Adam to follow. And for us, because it's about... Perpetual covenant. It's supposed to be for, for generations to come. You understand? Um, you had a question. Oh, no. no. When it comes to evangelism, yes, sir. Right. Um, I love evangelism. Right. And <coughs> I don't mind going out on the after we finish on Sabbath evening, like because the springtime is coming. We come to church. You know, we get our blessing. We eat a little food. Afterwards, we are going. I don't mind. I love the evangelism, right? I, I, I think I look forward to it, you know? But part of the Sabbath, from what I've read and understood, part of Sabbath observance is come to church. You yes, yes. must come and be refilled. Yes. You can't miss that time and go and set aside to meet these people. Yes, that's you important. You cannot miss that. You cannot stay home. That's important. You know why? Fellowship. Yes. yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We're practicing the fellowship with holy angels. In fact, all these empty seats are filled with holy angels. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. They need to feel comfortable by your side. Amen. Yes, my sister. I know in the Bible, Christ left heaven, mm -hmm. and we can see the ministry started at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. he went to church every Sabbath. Yes. He did good on the Sabbath, but he went to church. The Bible said, do not forget the assemblings of, of the yourself brother, yes. together as a manner of custom on the Sabbath day. Yes. This is one thing we must take heed to. Mm -hmm. Because he said we come to refresh, to fellowship with yeah. each other. To fellowship with each other. Each That's other. the refreshing. To inf to That's the refreshing. the presence of God with us. We refresh the, the togetherness and we're happy to worship God together. Amen. You know I love you, right? Amen. I hope y'all believe that. Amen. Amen. All right. I really do. Hmm. I miss you guys. I pray for you. You guys my wife. I pray for you all the time. I love you. I know when I'm out there six days a week messing with devils, I can't wait to see you. Oh, I Amen. know. It's like, right? Amen. I'm in the world. It's I'm a truth. husband. It's truth. I'm a father. And I have to leave my home to wrestle with dungeons and dragons. Yes. <laughs> and I got to go home and make sure the world stays outside. Correct. Mm. So I can be in heaven with my wife. Amen. And my family. And then come to church on Sunday. And then, because we, 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 we battling with the world. Yes. And our wives out yes. there working too. Yes. And so we can't wait for the Sabbath. Amen. Why? Because yes. that Refresh. fellowship yes. is the refreshing we need Hallelujah. to go into the next mm. week. Yes. 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 See, this is what's not being taught. Yes. Yes, my brother. Yes, sister. You got a hand up? Yes. Um, about the evangelism, yes. I was told when I read to that um, we have to go out on Sabbath. But I didn't read it so much as oh, wow. Sister White said that the, the books should be scattered and put mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. like leaves. Yes. But I told them it's not. She didn't say it on Sabbath. You know, exactly. She didn't say that. And I, as a person, everybody personally, you could go scatter and give up the books. Yes. You don't have to wait for Sabbath. No, you don't have to. Go and do it. It's, in fact, six days you work, right? Yeah. You can do it part of your work. Amen. I'm a Lyft driver. I drive, you know, people around, you know? I got my steps to Christ, my great controversies in my back seat. Mm -hmm. And I'm always praying for a pastor to take them. Mm -hmm. But if they don't take them, listen, I have a conversation. Yeah. You know why? Because they're going to learn about my God. God Amen. desires for every man to be saved. Amen. And everybody gets in my car. They've been hurting during the week sometime. Mm 
Yes. So the best testimony for them if they have to get the book is your testimony. Amen. Amen. That's evangelism. Yes. Amen. You do that every day of the week. But when you come into the house of God on Sabbath, yes. you come here to rest in his presence and be refreshed mm -hmm. and get ready for the devil's temptations yes. the next yes. six days. Yes. 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 Amen. yes, my sister. My brother, I do not work these days. I go to therapy three days a week. It's okay, mother. I carry out the books with me. Before I reach on the bus and I begin to talk, and I just tell them, I said, here's a gift that for you. said, do I have to do I said, no, it's free. It's free. So, enjoy the book and God bless you. Praise the Lord. May it lead Praise your the Lord. heart to where God wants. And you give the books. You give the books. That's it. I'm home. If I'm, I'm walking, I tell people about God. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yes. You're working for Him. And it's okay that you, you, know, you don't work every day. Let me make that clear. The commandment does say work six days. But sometimes not everybody can work six days. But what's your motive? Yes, you understand? God us. looks at the what? Heart. The heart. The yes. motive. Yes. Some people have disabilities. They cannot work every day or may not work at all. So now Christ comes in the life and takes care of the difference. Amen. You understand that? We have to keep that in, our, in the forefront of our mind. But and nonetheless, the commandment still stands. Rest the seven, work the six. Yes. Mm -hmm. And even when I, I enter the bus, I stand right in the the place to enter. You, or you pray. Pray yes. for the driver. Pray without ceasing. You pray, pray. for everybody. Yes. God bless and will yes. give them a blessed day. You doing missionary. Yes. It's about the heart. Mm -hmm. It's about the heart. Yes, baby. So, okay. If I have a car. Yes. Right? And, you know, after every oil change, the schedule the next date, when mm -hmm. you post it, you have another oil change. Yeah. What happens if I keep missing that date and keep running mm -hmm. the car, running the car, running the too. car? He's asking my question. Yes, guess what? I got a BMW and needs oil change. Mm -hmm. I need front end work. I know I need for it. It costs thousands of dollars to do my car. I don't have it. <laughs> I don't no, but have the it. Question I try, but, the question what happens to the soul? If you keep missing that point, where God, that, that appointed time, it gets stressed out. God creates for His people to meet with Him. Yes. If you keep missing, we're going to happen. The thing is, the soul gets defiled because apparently, what you feed in it, you feed in it hurt. You understand? You're stressed out. You can't rest when you're stressed. If you got too many worries and anxiety or fears, which we just read about, right? It interferes with your rest. Like I said, I have that BMW out there, right? And I know I have to fix it. I'm like, oh, where the money gonna come from? So what, you know? But I always pray to God, don't allow this thing to stress me out. That car is still where it's at, and he made sure that I got here safely. Praise him. To be in fellowship with you all. Because I need to be refreshing too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love you guys. I miss you all. And it took me 22 extra minutes from my time to get here to be with you all so we can have this message to celebrate together. Amen. You see me, I'm a happy guy, right? Yes. <laughs> There's a reason for that, because I know my Lord. Yes. If the, if the vehicle breaks down, praise the Lord. I'm still going to make it here. But if he keeps it up, praise the Lord. We cannot allow the trial to dictate how we should praise God. Okay. Or how he should... Uh, 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 how we should rest in His presence. See, this is what it all means. This is what it all boils down to. All right, the Sabbath covenant. Remember, I said there's three covenants, right? Here's the next. Um, the covenant of grace and faith. Humanity was given opportunity to exercise his faith in God's amazing grace and in the garden. God has given every man what? Inspiration, responsibility, and status. Right? Freedom of choice. He gave him what? Purpose, direction, and vision. This is all in Genesis chapter 2. What else? Employment, love and acceptance, authority and dominion. This is all in Genesis chapter 2. That's why I said read ahead of it. I'm a sixth grade dropout. And I found those things. <laughs> hmm. And we don't preach this. Let me let me explain to you. Being inspired. Is God's law in your life. Amen. It's a law. When God decided to get his fingernails dirty to create men, 
He created every single being in there and inspired him. When you go outside of inspiration, you malfunction. That means you're under law. When you don't have nothing inspiring your life, especially if it's not coming from God, you're supposed to, all inspiration comes from God. Every other influence comes from the enemy of the world. But inspiration comes from God. If God is not inspiring, you're malfunctioning. You're not meeting your ideal purpose. And you become extremely dangerous to others. True. Mm. True. The first thing God did with man was inspire. He breathed into dirt. And man became somebody. He was under inspiration, not under law. Man was given responsibility. Remember, he, he says that um, God what? He put him in the garden to do what? Dress and cultivate. You're responsible now for this home. God created him outside the garden, but yet he put him in a place of responsibility, gave him status. Ellen White yes. says Adam was made king of Eden. Amen. Hmm. Gave it up. So when a man is outside of responsibility, he don't know where his position is. He malfunctions. Exactly. He's dangerous. And all these things here, you understand something? If a man is not operating in this capacity, the Bible says it's good for that man to be alone. True. He shouldn't be with anybody because he's dangerous. He's dangerous. Freedom of choice. God says, of every tree in the garden, you may what? Freely eat. Gave him the law and everything to, to preserve his freedom. So that freely include also the um the tree of life. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. No, no, no. He, he prohibited that. That's why the law is there. Well, he's, he's the, yes, he said, yeah, freedom. Yeah, every freedom. tree except this one. He said what? But then there but was he still law. had the freedom. No, but then he had the freedom. Yes. But then law and freedom synchronizes. Exactly. So you see, the the law was given exactly. to protect his freedom. Freedom. Exactly. Not to prohibit his freedom. Exactly. To protect his freedom. Mm. All right? God gave him freedom of choice. Purpose, direction, and vision. Remember the four rivers? Right? Yes. Y'all know the name of the rivers? Yes. Gihon, yes. Euphrates, yes. Hedeko, yes. right? Yes. What else? Yes. Yeah, you, you know why God put that there? Have you ever asked him when you read the text, why do you have to put this in? What, what, what's the significance of this? God put it there so you have direction. Mm -hmm. You have direction in your emotions, you have direction in your intelligence, you have direction in your society. That's why he put it there. He gave you purpose, gave you direction, gave you a vision. When we see those living streams, right, God is telling us how to move, how to navigate our lives. That's what the waters were there for. They were four corners of the earth. They were pointed somewhere. He was telling us we have to be in control of our emotions, about our thought life about our social interactions, you understand? And our spiritual equilibrium. We have to have a vision for those things. In fact, as a husband, you should have a vision for your wife. Mm. You need that purpose, direction, vision. What else? Employment. God gave him work. Name the animals. That's a giraffe? All right, I accept it. That's a monkey? I love that too, Adam. Great. My thoughts exactly. Yeah, that's cultivation. We saw you talked about responsibility. Love and acceptance. He gave that kind of man a wife. A man who works. A man who knows his position and status. A man who's his You understand. I don't have to repeat it. Right? But that's a covenant. That's the covenant of grace and faith. Amen. I supply the grace, you exercise the faith. Hallelujah. Adam says. You know, I do have my own mind. I don't think I should eat of the tree of life. Mm. That would have been a sin. Mm. He would have been outside of his alignment. He wouldn't have met his ideal relationship. It's not just eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but if he did eat of the tree of life, mm. oh. authority and dominion. After God gave him a wife, he gave him authority and dominion. It's not that the man was supposed to lord over his wife. It's that because he's this kind of guy, he's the lead her. He was delegated authority for her. So a man who doesn't lead, 
is a man who can't love. Mm. 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 Wow. That one. This is Genesis chapter a two. Man who can't love. Any man outside of this is extremely dangerous. If you don't believe me, just watch a rap video. Go ahead, watch those rap videos. Look at those Cardi B's and all them mm -hmm. duck them mm -hmm. heads. Mm -hmm. Trying to be somebody. Mm -hmm. And their relationships can't work. And they keep jumping in and jumping out of them and going back and forth because they're out of their alignment. This is the covenant of grace and faith. I don't know mm. why. Say, say it again, Ella. Say it again. <laughs> Ooh, the reason why people keep jumping in and out of relationships is because they're out of their alignment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not under inspiration. They're not, they don't know their responsibility. They don't exercise freedom of choice. The decisions that they make put them in bondage. You see why God had to deliver Israel out of bondage? Hmm. You see why when God wrote the Ten Commandments, He said, I am the Lord, your God, which at what? Brought he out of what? Egypt? Out of the house of? Because we put ourselves there. When we're out of alignment, we put ourselves in slavery. We're talking about the law of God. We're talking about the pillars of faith. And they're not teaching it how they're supposed to be taught. We say, yeah, God written in his stone. Yes, it's the law. You've got to keep the Sabbath. But what about six days? We're supposed to work also. We're supposed to be a blessing to everyone. True. Can't keep Sabbath for being not a blessing on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You understand my point? True. You're preaching half commandments, mm -hmm. half truths, which is a full lie. Hmm. We need to be careful. As my sister says, some people say, oh, Sunday is blessed. Yeah, it's blessed because I'm in it because of the power of God to give me to be a blessing to others. The day wasn't blessed. God made me a, be a blessing to others. He blessed me so I could be a blessing. What did God say when he created man? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But the Bible says he blessed man. He blessed man to be what? Fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue the enemy. That's Genesis 1.26, by the way. God gave him responsibility. Going forward. So you see, we have the Sabbath covenant in Genesis chapter 2. We have the covenant of grace and faith. What's the other one that I said that we have? The covenant of what? Marriage and family. How important is that? Do you understand? A lot of us don't know how to be married. I didn't know how. But the scriptures taught me how. I listened to the spirit of God. Because I had no example of what a husband should be like. And I love my wife. I love my family. I love all of you. And I, this is not something you taught in the streets. It's because I am inspired by the word of the spirit of God that I can love you all. Hmm. So how do we love in marriage? Excuse me a little bit. Uh, the covenant is the marriage covenant, the Ten Commandments of marriage. How many know that the marriage has Ten Commandments? It's taken from the Ten Commandments. Number one, exclusive loyalty to my spouse. Exclusive loyalty to my spouse. That's the first commandment. Your spouse is yours. No one else. You're supposed to be loyal to her and her alone. Him or him alone. Amen. That should be your motive. Right? Going for it. Truthfulness and faithfulness. Why did I put that there? That's the second commandment. You don't love your spouse simply because they're beautiful. You love them simply because of the value God placed on that individual. Amen. And you remain truthful and faithful to that image that God has put in your life. So it's not just the person I marry who's beautiful, she's nice in shape and all that stuff. Mm. Great. But who is she in the eyes of God? Do I value that? That's the second commandment. Mm. Do you realize God says in the second commandment, right, you should not make any graven images? Because no man has ever seen God. No man has even seen Jesus, and yet we want to say he's black. Mm -hmm. I hate that. And they, they try to put all kinds of colors on Jesus and stuff like that. The only color I'm going to put on Jesus is glory. And I don't know what that color looked like. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say he's black or he's white or he was a little olive because he was a Jew back in the middle. I don't care. I care when I read Revelation chapter 1, the sun was shining in his strength. And I can't even see past the sun. He's the color of glory. That's the only color I want to know. What color his blood was? 
It's called it's the blood is blood was red. We we can be sure of that. That's one thing we certain because every human being has red blood. It may be positive O or A or B, we don't care, but it's still the same color. But as far as his facial features, I don't care if he was black, I don't care if he was polka dot, I don't care if he looked like a lizard. He looks like glory. And that's all I care about. And I am faithful to that image than to go out there and preach that Jesus was black. When you go out there and say things like that, you are revealing how prejudiced you really are. You're not faithful and true to the image. You don't value nobody but yourself. And it gets deeper. But here we go. Truthfulness and faithfulness to the image of your spouse. You're exclusively loyal to them. You're truthful and faithful. You honor your spouse in public and in private. I have met husbands, I have counseled husbands who beat on their wives in this church. But they sit here, they return to faithful time, they talk about health messages, and they beat up on their wives in private. They're not faithful to the command. They're not faithful to the command. And when they're not faithful to the command, they're outside of alignment. And when you're outside of alignment, you're what? Dangerous. You're dangerous. Because many of us don't know the Ten Commandments of marriage, but this came right out the Garden of Eden. What else? Give my spouse time and rest. God says, remember the Sabbath day. That wasn't just for him. He also said it for your spouse. Listen, what did he say inside the commandment? He said, neither show your neighbor work Neither shall your stranger that come in your gate, neither your kids, neither your mates. Give them time and rest. That's a command. Going forward. Rightly related to my parents and in-laws. We all have parents. We come from somebody. Right? Listen, I love my in-laws. They weren't the best. But I love them. I take care of them and everything like that. You have to rightly relate to your parents and your in-laws. Hmm. Because honoring them is keeping you existing on the earth. Your longevity is dependent on how you treat your parents and your in-laws. It's dependent on that. Yes, it's a command. Yes, it's yes. written in stone. Yes. Your existence is dependent on how you respect authority figures. Going for it. Uh, freedom from uncontrolled emotions and anger. Hmm. Thou shalt not do a murder. Do you realize that's above thou shalt not commit adultery? You know you, you can do murder by just being angry with someone without a cause? Yes. Because you're not in control of your emotions. You're harboring hatred, unforgiveness. Hmm. You're out of alignment. Yeah. Hmm. Moving forward. Sexual faithfulness controlled by reason. Some people abuse the privilege. Mm. Mm. Yes. They abuse the marriage bed. Mm. I don't even want to touch on that subject, honestly. Mm. The, the, the things I hear, and the things I know when I talk to men, and I talk to dozens, thousands. Let's go forward a little bit, because we're going to, I just want to finish this and we'll celebrate the rest in a little while. Uh, but just before you go on, because you hear, because People come to me to like for advice on certain things. Um, because man as well as woman, they would tell you, oh, the marital bed is undefiled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could do anything within. No, sir. Okay. Within the marital thing because it's a, it's it's on the file. What does anything mean? But then failing to recognize also that your body is God's is the temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we was talking about laws that governs freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um um yes we know the Bible says that the marital bed is on the file. But yet still there is there is the thought that is well not the thought but there is the the law that says your 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 
your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. So even though the bed is undefiled, there is still things that governs the law of uh, there is the law that governs mankind. Yes. That's how to live. Yes. yes. So yes. then you That's so correct. then you have to synchronize these two together. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's 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 it may be I wouldn't call it ticklish, but people put it that way as to um, um, have their, their 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 own gratification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yes. mm -hmm. And they abuse the privilege. Exactly. They abuse the privilege just because you may be married rightly under the eyes of God doesn't mean you're supposed to abuse the privilege of the exactly. you know, married mm -hmm. Many right. people do that, and they pay a hefty price of you know patience and yes. love with that individual. Yeah. Sometimes. We'll touch on that, you know, a little something. But I'm gonna try for, uh, for the sake of time. Let's do. Uh, let's do. Respect my spouse's property and her privacy. Is Dash and I steal. That means don't check her emails on her phone. Don't look for things that can cause you to be jealous. Respect her privacy. Respect her property. That's almost the same as what? Respect her in public and in private. You understand? Uh, number nine. Vice versa. Yeah. Uh, it goes both ways, man and woman. The Ten Commandments of Marriage. That's the covenant. That's the marriage covenant. Uh, truthful communication. Important. Never tell lies to your spouse, but never live a lie with your spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have met husbands who don't lead their wives, right, to the Lord which we all should do, which is a good thing. Why? Because you're in alignment. When you don't do that, you're living a lie. Because the woman's her greatest desire is to see that she can respect you. She submits to your work in the Lord. She don't submit to you as a person. She submits to the work of the person. Because she's submitting to God. She desires to respect you. She and when she, you. when she can't respect you, she all of a sudden becomes out of alignment. She must see God in you, right? She has to see the Lord in you, not just you. She may love you. She care for you. She'll feed you. But she needs to see the Lord for herself through you. And if you're not leading her, she's going to find it hard to respect you over time. Women's feelings change like the clouds. Abortion. Am I lying, ladies? No. no. Not lying. I don't mean to offend you, but I'm being I'm, I'm, honest. I'm being honest. It's the truth. You have to be truthful in your communication. Mm -hmm. Lead her to your Lord so that she can willingly surrender herself. Correct. Submission is not for you as a husband. It's to God Amen. in you. Yes. Amen. That's, it's so then this is what the church is not teaching. But he can teach a sixth grader. If you're willing and you're honest, he will teach you. He will lead you. I watched the Spirit of God do numbers of blessings in my life, and I never asked a miracle. Hmm. But he taught me how to speak. Amen. Put his word on my tongue. Praise Praise the Lord. Him. Look, number 10. Freedom from demands. Contentment is great gain. Yes. This is all promises. Yes. This is how you stay married. This is how you sustain a marriage. Be content with who you're with. Hallelujah. Amen. The body composition may change, but guess what? I love seeing old couples that have been saying they have, they've been married for 50 years. I love that. Mm -hmm. And they begin to look alike. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. You know why? Because they've taken on the form of angels together. That's what love does. That's what you do when you're in a covenant. That's why it has to be taught properly. This is all part of the law of God. This is because of our faith. Now, we're going to continue on later, but I just want us to celebrate have we enjoyed this morning's lesson? Amen. 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 This is what needs to be taught properly so we understand it, so we can foster our relationships, so that every day of the week we know that it is good. It is good. It is well with my soul. That when we come into the Sabbath, it is very good. Yes. Let us pray.